Ecclesiastes 7.21 says, Also, do not take to heart everything people say, lest you hear your servant cursing you. Ecclesiastes 7.21 It is important right off the bat to understand that the biblical concept of servants and slaves it is completely different from what we know to be slaves uh, earlier on at the beginning of the United States when people had slaves and black slaves and the like. A servant slash slave back in the day pertained to those, a lot of times, for those who uh, could not pay off a debt that they owed to someone. And so because they were not able to do that, they offer themselves up to that person that they are indebted to. And, you know, there's a certain time frame, a, a certain amount of duty that needs to be done where because they can't pay off that person, instead they offer themselves as a, a slave or servant to be able to work that debt off and then uh, hopefully be able to reach that time where they can then become free again. So the concept of slave and, and servants was different back then. Obviously, if we continue to go way, way back to the Egyptians and Moses, there were slaves. Um, you know, with God's people and the Egyptians. But what we're talking about in this passage is just to understand slaves and servants are those who, uh, because they can't pay something off, they offer themselves to work for the person in which they owe. But it is important for us to know that uh, we need to not take heart too hard everything people say. Because if we do that, we're going to be led by people's opinions by their perceptions of us, and then we're going to try and fit some narrative that is not God-honoring, but is based upon fitting the narrative of what other people want to believe or changing who we are because we want to be perceived as someone in which we are not to other people in order to either enter into a friend group, be able to establish the business connections, and the like. Because there are many people who are uh, manipulative and they are chameleon they're a chameleon, so to speak. They change with whatever the environment and situation they are in because they don't stand for anything. And we know that those who don't stand for uh, anything do not stand up for uh, anything either. So those who uh, do not stand for, or I'm sorry, those who do not stand for anything are going to give way to everything else. So someone who is a chameleon, so to speak, they are going to obviously not stand for anything, and they're just going to blend in with the friend group, whether it's to be cool. Again, maybe it's to blend in with a certain job uh, manifestation. Maybe there's gossip going on about someone, so they partake in the gossip with this group. But then on the other branch of the business, they hear other things, and so they blend in with that, and they're just trying to be people pleasers at the end of the day because they have some sort of agenda, some sort of final pursuit that they want to fulfill for themselves and this is selfishness to the core and there is nothing concrete within that person and they are as a ship tossed to and fro within the water of a storm and they just go with wherever their heart desires and their end is destruction and that's why it is important for us to become born again when we believe Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior and we repent of our sins when this occurs we are able to, and there's always going to be pressure. There's always going to be things that disturb us. But over time, we begin to learn that man's opinion, what does it matter? At the end of the day, we're all going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ on that final day, and we will have to give an account. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. And so when we stand before the great white throne, there's only one voice that matters, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And so when we stand there, we're not going to be worried about, oh, you know, who so-and-so was talking about my outfit today and they thought it wasn't good enough or, or you know, oh, they didn't, they said something, you know, about my hair, it wasn't looking good or, or they, you know, they don't think I'm attractive or they, they think I do my job poorly or that I should be doing a different job. People will always have opinions and we need to not take heart everything people say lest we hear our servant cursing us, and then through that, we ultimately start to, in our inner life, become downcasted, disturbed, and through this, this distorts our ability to walk peacefully and in simplicity of God's word and God's voice. 
Because at the end of the day, that is what truly matters. We want to hear God's voice in all things. We want to be men and women who are sensitive to the Holy Spirit speaking. And we cannot do that if we are not spending time in God's Word. We cannot do that if we are not cultivating and developing a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Those who enter into the faith, it will be new to them. They will know if they truly have the Holy Spirit within. They're going to be convicted of certain things, but they're also going to be encouraged uh, with a lot of things by the Holy Spirit. But when someone enters into the faith and is a new believer, it, it, it takes some time, but the Holy Spirit is a person. He is within us, and we can cultivate that friendship. We can get to know him. We can be walking down and saying, my Holy Spirit, that is just a, a beautiful animal that I see. What? How did you even think to create that? Or, or just talking with him as just like a friend was right beside us, just pouring out our heart and our feelings. And he is there to listen because he is there to sanctify us. He's there to lead us in truth. He's there to guide us into all things pertaining to the Father's will. He helps to enlighten and give us understanding behind God's word. And it is important that we spend time in God's word because anyone who does not spend time in God's word, they're going to give much more way to what they're hearing from other people. And they're going to be downcasted. They are just going to be led by what other people are saying and thinking. Their mind is going to be distorted throughout the day. Their thoughts are going to continually be about what so-and-so said. When the reality is, the more time we spend in God's word, the less we care and the less we allow other people's opinions to get to us because we know that we, everyone, including us, are all sinners, that we are all wicked internally, we all are misguided. We, uh, even, even when we are born again, certain things that we think someone else maybe should be doing with their lives and they're not, we think that they're in the, they're in the wrong we all are guilty of this, but at the end of the day, when we're spending more time in God's word and with God, we will not take to heart everything people say because we know that the words that we hear from other people are coming from sinners. They're coming from people who are forever going to be in need of the grace of God. And especially if they're unbelievers, we need to not allow anything that they say to get to us. Rather, we need to have compassion on them because unless they become born again and believe in Christ and repent of their sins, they are headed for a life of eternal torment. Not torture, but torment, where they will live for, themse for themselves and with themselves forever and ever, as in the lake of fire and in, in hell, as the presence of God is extracted. And we don't want anyone to go there. God doesn't want anyone to go there. But nonetheless, when you create free will creatures, there are always going to be People in, in any type of world, any type of universe, any type of anything, with free will comes the ability to choose otherwise, and it comes with responsibility. And many people are not responsible, nor do they desire to truly come to know him who created them. And that is a sad reality. But nonetheless, we need to pray for those people. So may we just come to understand that we need to not take to heart everything people say, because... We're going to hear people that will curse us. They will blaspheme in the name of Christ. They will mock us. They will indoctrinate to other people their opinions of us to where people without even knowing us will start to have the viewpoint in which they want to view us as simply because of what someone else has said. And at the end of the day, we know that will not him, as Genesis says, will not him, the God of all, do right? At the end of the day, God is just. He's not going to let anything slide. And so long as we are following him, he will take care of the rest. Because we know Christ went to the cross. He was the perfect God-man, yet he was mocked, ridiculed. His reputation uh, was, uh, quote-unquote, dismantled, not because of anything he did, but because the Pharisees and the Sadducees and everyone was trying to defame him and then everyone else bought into this concept that they were creating when it wasn't in fact reality. Christ's reputation was strong on the firm foundation of who he was, but the perception of exterior people, obviously the re reputation was damaged, again, not because of anything Christ did, but because of what other people were saying about Christ that was not true and that was full of deceit and lies because they because those very things came from sinners themselves
So may we understand that we don't need to listen to everyone's opinion. We need to filter out, we need to guard our heart and go to God and certain things and just trust that he will convict us of what needs changing. But if things are not convicted of and people are gossiping, slandering, all of that, we need to know that God will take care of us because God is a God of love and he loves his children and he will protect us to the very end.